Katinska from Push Push Go. And I'm pleased to introduce you to Maria from Contentino. And today Maria will tell us more about um, how to use social media and how to analyze statistics from them to um, power up your marketing activities, especially during um, Christmas, Black Friday, and this hot time for e-commerces. And you can be sure that, of course, we'll provide you with recording of today's webinar. And at the end, and at the end uh, we will send, uh, we'll invite you to a short Q&A session. And of course, you can ask us everything. And to me and Maria will try to uh, provide you with uh, all answers you may need. Um, so, OK, I think that uh, we can start. And uh, Maria, microphone is yours. Hi guys, thank you for joining me for this webinar and before we begin, I would like to introduce you Contentino itself. So, for those who don't know, Contentino is a social media calendar perfect for agencies and clients thanks to its team collaboration and specialization. Uh, it was actually created four years ago in Triad, and I remember the times when we were using Word documents, Excel sheets, and PowerPoint presentations for creating social media content, and we were exchanging thousands of emails between the team and clients, and now it sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> and uh, another thing is that uh, there is more people involved in the process of creating social media content, as you know. For example, copywriters, social media managers, strategists, creative team leaders, and on the other side, there is a client who wants to see how exactly the post will look like for it goes live. And since there wasn't such a tool on the market, we decided to create our own one. And that, that's how Contentino was born. Uh, after two years of using and making Contentino better, uh, we decided to go on the market and offer it to other agencies and clients as well. That was the year 2016 and today Contentino is being used by over uh, 500 agencies and clients from all over the world, for example, Ogilvy, Meccan, BBDO, IKEA or Volvo. Uh, after um, you know, uh, recently we launched our analytics feature as well, uh, which differs from other analytics tools in one significant thing, uh, because it puts numbers in context. I will explain it in the next slides when we will be talking about the relevant metrics related to the goals of your campaigns. So, that was a long story short, and now is the time to jump onto our topic. And in the first part of the presentation, we will talk about measuring and reporting your social media campaigns like a pro, obviously, uh, in general. And in the second part, we focus on holiday season and what to expect. So, why do you think is it important to measure your social media performance in general? Well, the answer is pretty simple. Without analyzing it, you will never know if it's working or not. So, uh, in social media, same as in any other advertising channels, you need to know what your goal is and how to measure whether your goal was reached or not. Fortunately, on social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, or even LinkedIn, uh, you can choose from several campaign goals and objectives, play with many ad formats and measure your activities pretty deep. Uh, as you can see on the slide, these are your options of marketing objectives that you can choose from in Facebook Ads Manager. As you can see, Facebook campaigns work on standard marketing con conversion funnel that has three levels of the relationship between your target audience and your brand. I will quickly walk you through it just to make sure we all are on the same page. So first of all, you need to make sure that people know that your brand exists. In this case, 
reach or brand awareness campaigns are the right choices for you, obviously. As soon as your customers know about you, you should start to interact with them and build an active relationship with them. So that's time to use engagement campaigns or uh, deliver your message in a video or send them to your website. In the last level, um, you finally want to make some business. <laughs> so conversion campaigns are a great way to make people take the action on your website, which can be anything, for example, a completed registration, a purchase, a click on the button on the page and view your content and so on. So as soon as you have your goal set, you need to choose the metrics which you will be look at and which will tell you if your campaign is doing good and if it's reaching the goal. In other words, you need to know your KPIs or set your KPIs. As you can see, Facebook offers a lot of them. But, of course, not all are always relevant for you and your campaigns. So just make sure that your KPIs, which is key performance indicators, are connected to your goals. I will explain it on these few examples. Oh, just a second. Okay, so first one. Uh, let's say that we ran a reach campaign. What data and metrics will be interesting for you? Well, organic, paid, and total reach, of course, but what else? Is there anything else that will be interesting for you to look at? Well, you want to also know how much did it cost? How much did it cost you to reach 1,000 people, or how much did it cost to show your ad to 1,000 people? which are uh, impressions, of course, and so on. Another example. Imagine that you are running a traffic campaign when you are sending people to a website outside of Facebook. So, in this case, what will be the most interesting information for you? How many clicks you got, of course, and what else? So, you always want to look at the cost per result. doesn't matter if it's a uh, reach campaign, engagement campaign, you always want to know how much did it cost. So in this case, uh, you also want to look at the cost per click or click-through rate as well, and so on. Other numbers like interactions, people reached, or also are also important, and uh, you want to look at it as well, but they are your secondary goals because uh, your campaign was optimized for traffic. So your main goals are uh, clicks and how much did it cost. You know, uh, this is actually one of the major mistakes people make when reporting performance of their ads. They want everything from them. Lots of likes, lots of clicks, and high reach as well. But the thing is that you can't get it all in the same campaign. Uh, you have to focus on your main goal. So, I want to explain it to you on, these, on this uh, simple example. So, look at these two posts. These are just some standard uh, content posts for the same page, promoting some insurance services. The creative is pretty similar, just some static uh, image from the uh, photo bank, uh, and the most important thing is that they were promoting for exact same media budget, some 30 euros or something, so pretty low. But the thing is that there, were, there was one significant difference between them, and it was the marketing objective of a campaign they were running on. So, this one, I don't know if you can see it uh, properly. I need to make it full screen for myself. <laughs> so, this one 
as you can see, uh, reached um, higher number of interactions such as likes or there are some shares as well. Uh, but the reach was pretty low, uh, 6,000 something people compared to the other one. Uh, they were 20,000 people reached and uh, the interactions was much less than the previous one. So the thing is that this one was running as an engagement campaign and this one was running as a reach campaign. So as you can see, you have to focus on one goal only when you are promoting your social media content. On this slide, you can compare it for uh, yourself as well. But the takeout from this is if you want higher reach, do not, do not optimize for engagement. Optimize for reach, obviously. Engagement increases only organic reach and, of course, engagement. Okay, so now, how can you know if these numbers are good or if your campaign wasn't too expensive? Well, the answer is that you need to know your benchmarks. You can learn from your previous campaigns and set your own benchmarks. Uh, because every brand is different, every product is different, uh, some is more uh, likable, some not and so on. So it's very individual and it depends on many, many factors. So as long as you know that your average, let's say, CPM was 3 euros, CPM is cost per uh, 1,000 impressions. So you can say that anything below 3 euros is a success for you because it was below your uh, benchmark or your average price for 1,000 people reached. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about the mistakes people make most often when it comes to the metrics and the analyzing of the metrics. Uh, let's talk about engagement itself a little bit. Uh, this is a pretty bold statement to say that engagement is overrated, but I will explain. Uh, when we ask our clients what metric matters the most to them, their answer is engagement, usually. But when it comes to a reason why they want high numbers of engagement so bad, they usually don't know what to say. Or they say, you know, it's a proof the ad creative is popular and likable for their target audience. Well, I understand, but this is not very business-oriented reason to say. Uh, of course, there are situations when engagement has its place, of course, but it always has to have a meaningful purpose. So, take Facebook event, for instance, or the posts which are made to entertain people somehow and require some interaction. Facebook event, for example, uh, you can you can promote it as an uh, event promotion as well, but it's okay when you promote it as an engagement because you want some interaction from people uh, to click on the button that they are attending the event and so on. So this is a good uh, example to use engagement. Or another chapter in social media content, the contests. <laughs> the con Tests are probably the best way how to increase the engagement with your target audience, but please always do it wisely. The price and a topic of the post should be related to your brand or your product somehow to bring you some value. But the most popular metric uh, related to the engagement is probably the engagement rate. Well, in my personal opinion, this is an old-fashioned metric a little bit because I don't know if you know, but it was originally counted with the number of the fans of your page. And uh, as you know, the number of your fans is not so important today anymore because 
you promote your content, you can target uh, to people who doesn't like your page, but you can still reach them uh, thanks to thanks to the targeting and the ad. So um, that's why in content in analytics the engagement rate is counted differently. Uh, it is the number of people reached divided by the number of people engaged, not by the number of your fans. And you can measure it for the whole page as well. Okay, let's jump on to another huge, huge topic and that is video. I'm sure you are aware that this is the most popular medium format today. But when it comes to measuring the video performance, it is a little bit tricky. Facebook shows you a beautiful numbers of video views right under your video. But is this video views really a view? Well, the answer is no, it's not, because it includes every two second video views or more. What does it mean for you? These two seconds views are useless for you because I don't think you delivered your message in these first two seconds, did you? That's why you need to look at the more relevant metrics such as average watch time, average video watch time, of course. Uh, so have a look at this simple graph. Average watch time of this uh, 40 second video was 17 seconds. So as long as you delivered your message before these 17 seconds, you can say that your video was successful because you made your point, you delivered your message to your target audience, so everything's fine. And if people finish the video, if they watched it uh, until the end, it's just a bonus for you. It's just good for you, but your most important information is if you were able to deliver the message uh, soon enough. Look at the results of these two videos, this one and this one. Uh, they both are promoting the same music TV show, but the creative of the videos is different. I will just tell you that um, unfortunately we are not able to uh, view the videos uh, to play it, but I will just tell you that in one of them was used a product intro. That's all you need to know about it. And in the other one, it was not used, this product intro, which was like, I don't know, five or 10 seconds. So this one without the product intro delivered the message in the first 10 seconds, which is also its average watch time. The other one gained four seconds average watch time only. And as the message wasn't delivered in this time frame because of the product intro, this video was less successful, even though the number of the standard video views is two times more than the other one, as you can see. So this is what I meant by saying that uh, you need to put data in context. OK, I want to make one more point when speaking about successful ads. Uh, you know conversions, right? It is the most valuable activity your target audience can take thanks to your Facebook ad. It can be anything, as I mentioned before, uh, for example, a completed registration, a purchase, a page view, and so on. Now, look at this ad. Just quickly think about it uh, and make your opinion if you think it was successful in your eyes and and why? I know you don't have much information, but you can see some interactions, some reactions, some comments. You can see organic and, and paid reach as well. Just quickly think about it, and then I will continue. So uh, someone could say that this is successful because it has a lot of interactions, such as reactions, comments, shares, and so on. Someone else could say that it is successful because of 
uh, it reached high people num high number of people. So the reach was pretty 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 good. Well, uh, the truth is, none of these numbers are important to us. It is our our ad, a Contentino ad, and it was running as a conversion ad. So its goal was send people to the landing page of Contentino and to subscribe for a free trial. It means completed registration. So relevant metrics are, in this case, number of completed registrations and a cost per uh, average cost per completed registrations. So any other numbers like directions and comments and so on, these are just a bonus, as I used to say, but they are also important because it looks good when your ad gains such a number of interactions because it makes it more uh, valuable in the eyes of your target audience and it just, it just looks good in the feed when you are scrolling down and you can see that uh, this ad was interesting for other people and it might be interesting for you as well but still this is not the most important thing for us. The most important thing for us are the number of registrations and the cost per one registration. So before we jump onto the second part of my presentation, uh, let's do a quick summary. So here are the most important takeouts for you. You can write it down or just <laughs> remember it or uh, it's up to you. So. First of all, define the right goals of your campaigns. Doesn't matter if you are doing campaigns on Facebook, on Instagram, uh, other social media platforms, platforms, you always have to make sure that you know what your goal is. Uh, after that, define the right KPIs. Uh, what numbers are you going to look at while analyzing uh, performance of your campaigns? Focus on metrics which make sense to you. Of course, we are talking about it. Understand your numbers and put it in context. So if you have video, always look at the relevant numbers and try to understand where the message was delivered, if you were able to before the average watch time, and so on. Another one. Experiment with co experiment, sorry, with content and format, especially when Facebook uh, launch a new post format. Use it, do it, create it, promote it, because um, it always uh, it's always uh, less expensive, I would say, and people who take this advantage from it. Uh, they also can um, make some great successful ads before their uh, competitors. Another one, learn from your own numbers. It means set your own uh, benchmarks and keep an eye on it. Well, and this is how your campaigns should be successful and I hope they'll be successful. But, <laughs> brace yourself, holiday season is coming, right? And it doesn't matter if it's Christmas time or Black Friday. Well, every time, uh, every time when, when there's something like this going on, brands wants to promote their products and sell more during this season. So every time uh, Facebook and uh, every other media platforms are overcrowded with ads, so that's why you need to get prepared for it. So, how can holiday season affect the performance of your campaigns? Well, think about it again. As I said before, everyone wants to increase sales during the Christmas season or during any holiday season. Everyone wants to promote their product and entertain their target audience to create some positive emotions thanks to Christmas atmospheres and so on. 
So that means that it will be everywhere. Everyone is going to create some Christmas wishes and all brands will do their best to get the most out of it. So what can happen because of that? Well, think about Facebook as the medium. Newsfeed of your target audience is not never ending. Only the best ads will appear in front of them. So that means that if more ads are targeting the same audience, it may be kind of booked out. So what can you do? Well, there's not much, but my recommendation for you is to create campaign and get it approved by Facebook in advance as soon as possible. Another option for you might be the reach and frequency campaign where you can literally book the audience for a certain time period for a fixed media budget. Another issue that you can experience during holiday season is that the cost per result of your campaigns might be more expensive than usual because they have to compete with thousands of others ads. Well, unfortunately, nobody can guarantee you anything during holiday season, especially on Facebook, but uh, there is one thing, one recommendation that works every time. Create a high quality content, <laughs> creative, funny, entertaining, outstanding and relevant for your brand at the same time. Because good creativity always will be the world. Uh, let me give you some good examples of social media activations uh, during a Christ Christmas time. So, this is a live stream O2 operator did uh, on Facebook as a contest for their target audience and they did it in a very smart, funny and engaging way. As you can see, it was three smartphones made of ice and they were slowly melting down. People were supposed to watch live stream and guess in comments which one will be completed mel completely melted as the one. So high number of comments uh, of reach for a very, very short uh, period of time. It was maybe one hour or so. So very, very engaging way and entertaining and of course, um, one of them uh, one actually some smartphone or something so it was a contest that uh, did in a, in a very outstanding and original way okay another example this is more product oriented campaign but still very nice and smart uh, there were created several Facebook canvases linked to each other with questions about your smartphone uh, preferences so people were supposed to answer simple questions like which operational system they like better, how much they want to spend for a new smartphone. And at the end, they got the recommendation what type of smartphone would be the right choice for them. Again, pretty smart use of one of the Facebook formats in an extraordinary way. But there are some uh, bad examples as well, of course, uh, uh, that we can learn from. And if I would have to say what types of content doesn't work on social media during holiday season, I would say just the generic content. Don't do it. Everyone does that and it's everywhere. It's annoying. Nobody wants to look at it and spend time with it. So don't do the same like the others. Try to come up with something original, something surprising. Look at this camp for Frisco on Instagram. Uh, they created uh, something like advent calendar on the Instagram profile with Christmas tips and inspirations. Sounds nice and creative and the photos and tips and inspirations, it all was very, very uh, creative and inspirational, but mm, it didn't work that well. But it also might be the idea of creating another advent calendar itself, because as you know, advent calendar 
uh, it's just mm, it's everywhere during Christmas, of course, because it's something something traditional, what everyone knows, but uh, as you can see, it wasn't successful at all because of it had a very, very low number of interactions and mm, nothing much was very uh, going on. So anyway, this was the last example. So my recommendation is be as much creative as possible. Always try to come up with something new, what your target audience hasn't seen yet, and everything will work well for you. I know it's easier said than done, but <laughs> it's challenging, and that is the most interesting part of it. So thank you for joining this webinar. I hope it, it, the, it was very inspirational for you and that you learned something new and feel free to ask some questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maria. You can, uh, you can see one question from Olha on our chat box. Can you see it? Uh, just give me a second. Okay, what is the best way to target audience? No, what is the best way to target and reach B2B audience on Facebook? Well, it's a good question. Well, B2B audience. Uh, as you know, in Ads Manager, there's a lot of options how to target your audience. You can use interest, interest uh, behaviors of your target audience, and I'm sure that there is something that you can find out. Audience <laughs> depends on the topic of the product or the brand or the message that you are delivering. Uh, it depends, but I'm sure that there are options how to do it. Maria, are you still with us? Pardon, say it again. Okay, I ask if you're still with us because I wasn't sure your internet connection is okay because I didn't hear you. But uh, but everything is okay, and I see that Olga just thanked for your uh, answer. Just uh, so everyone, please let us know if you have more questions for us. Maybe just we can give you a few more seconds or if everything is fine and you know everything that will come to the end. So, okay, thank you very much for your time. Uh, it was very nice to have you with us. And of course, uh, we will provide you with recording of today's webinar and uh, be sure that you will attend next webinar on next Friday when we will uh, talk more about web push notifications and using them in your sales activities during Christmas and so on and so on. So Maria and everyone, once again, thank you very much for your time and see you next week. Thank you very much. Bye guys. Bye.